Welcome to video number two in my Docker Essential series, and I am very excited to get started and teach you guys Docker, but before I do, there's a few more introductory concepts that I want to talk to you guys about, namely what Docker is in the first place and how we set it apart from other solutions and why you would want to use it in the first place. So let's have one more discussion on Docker related topics, and then we'll get started in the next video and even run our first container. So let's talk a little bit about Docker before we get started. First of all, what actually is Docker? Perhaps the simplest definition I can give you is that Docker is a platform that runs containers. Sure, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, but that's essentially why we use Docker, because we want to run containers. But what's a container? A container bundles an application's code and all of its dependencies into one object. So if you have ever downloaded and installed an application on Linux, for example, then you're probably accustomed to installing one package, but that one package requiring a bunch of other dependencies. In a Docker container, all of the dependencies that belong to an application are pre-installed. Everything the application needs to run is baked right into one container, one object. And containers themselves typically use less resources than virtual machines. And if you didn't already know, virtual machines actually predate containers, and even though VMs and containers are technically two different technologies, a comparison between the two is really hard to avoid, because a lot of the same things that we've used virtual machines for, we now use containers for. And Docker containers can be run almost everywhere. And the reason why I say almost everywhere is because Docker actually needs to be installed on the host, and the host is actually where containers are being run, which could be a server, a virtual machine, your laptop, a desktop, and so on. As long as your operating system has Docker available to be installed, then you can run Docker containers on it. Okay, so Docker sounds pretty darn awesome, but why would you actually want to use it? Why not just continue to use virtual machines? Now, first of all, containers can be easily copied and deployed. Now that's not to say that you can't also easily deploy virtual machines as well, because let's be honest, you can actually export a virtual machine, and you can import that virtual machine into a different hypervisor on a different server. But containers are actually smaller, they're a little bit more portable, so it's typically easier to deploy a container than it generally is to deploy a virtual machine. And just like virtual machines, applications that run in containers are kept separate and isolated from the rest of the host. And that's great because that adds a bit of a security benefit as well. And it's often the case that containers are cheaper to run than virtual machines. Now that can vary because if you are running containers in a cloud environment, you will be billed for the usage in the cloud environment. And it all depends on whether you are hosting your own hardware and running containers on that, or if you are running containers in a platform that actually has a monthly bill. But generally speaking, containers are often cheaper to run than virtual machines. At the very least, you can run more containers on a piece of hardware than you can run virtual machines on that same hardware. And Docker containers can be run on various platforms, including, but not limited to, Amazon Web Services, Linode, DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, and so on. So Docker sounds pretty cool, but what are the downsides? Are there any downsides? Well, when it comes to solutions in the information technology field, there's almost always downsides and Docker is no exception. First, not all apps are supported when run in containers. Now, what does that actually mean? So one example of that is you could have a piece of software, perhaps a piece of software that you pay a company for support on, and that company may not support you if they find out that you are running their software in a container. Now, obviously, I think companies should get with a program and actually embrace containerization because whether they like it or not, Containerization is actually very big. That being said, I've seen companies that don't support containers later start supporting them, so I think things are trending in the right direction. But in addition to that, I've actually experienced that some applications don't actually run well in a container on account of some way that they were developed by the developer. 
One example of that is at one point, I forgot the name of it, but I was trying to run an application in a container, and no matter what I did, it would not run. The reason why was because the developer made some not so great decisions and hard coded every single path inside their application, which means that when it encounters different paths and things in a container, the application didn't know what to do and would always crash. So just keep in mind that while containerization is awesome, not every application is a good fit to be run in a container. And although Docker is awesome, it's just one tool among many. And what I mean by that is it's often the case, especially with newcomers to technology, they learn how to use a technology, they're very excited about it, and who could blame them? The technologies are awesome. But what they'll sometimes do is try to use that technology even when it doesn't make sense. Yes, Docker is awesome, but it's just one tool. There's going to be some use cases that are great for Docker containers. There's going to be other use cases that may not work so well. At the end of the day, when you learn a new technology like Docker, it's one tool in your utility belt that you can use when it makes sense to use it. But don't get into the habit of forcing a technology to be used where it doesn't work so well. Just keep that in mind. And performance for Docker containers can sometimes be inconsistent. But usually, the inconsistency in performance is so low, you'll probably never notice. Now what I mean by that is since you can run Docker on various platforms, for example, you can install Docker on Windows 10, you can install it on Mac OS, you can install it in Linux, and once you install Docker, you can then run Docker containers on that host. But running a Docker container on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux is not really always the same thing. Yes, the container is going to be the same in every case. And no, you don't actually have to create separate containers for separate host operating systems. After all, the whole idea of containers is that you actually create one container and that container can be run anywhere that Docker containers are supported. So basically, if you can install Docker on something, then you can run containers on it. When it comes to Linux, if you are running Docker containers on a Linux host, you'll probably have better performance. The reason for that is because Docker containers are essentially Linux containers. They may not always be run on a Linux host, but they work the best with a Linux kernel. Linux is a kernel, so if you are already running Linux on something, then the container is directly interfacing with a Linux kernel, which is great because that's what it was built for. Now, if you install Docker on Windows, for example, it's most likely going to run on a Linux virtual machine that's run in the background because Docker is run on Linux. Windows 10 is not Linux. Since Windows 10 is not Linux, then there needs to be some kind of Linux kernel for Docker to run on. And that's why on that platform, you're going to be running containers against a virtual machine. However, the performance hit is probably not going to be noticeable and it shouldn't be an issue. So with that discussion out of the way, let's go ahead and get started and actually use Docker. I mean, that's what we all came here for, right? So in the next video, I'm going to walk you through installing the Docker desktop software on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux as well. And that video is already up on YouTube right now, so I'll see you there.